Well, mate, we are in quite the pickle here. We are, I reckon we've got a lot of track building to do. We want that's, to... that's about a six foot drop, like from the top right the way down. I can, I can walk under it and just hit the edge, yes. so it must be about six Exactly foot. right, folks. We are on the side of a hill in four wheel drive action style. I've got a long way to go before we get to the top of this, and we are only two cars in. We've got a long way to go, mate. I'm going to pass you these down. All right, we're going to build the road. Keep building the road. Get the recovery gear. Find somewhere comfortable to sit. Crack something cold. Get right into this one. Yeah, I'm going to drive this hill first. I'm getting out of the way. I'm getting in here. Just hold a sec. <laughs> Looking for a mad deal on the gear that you're chasing? Like this awning, I've got you covered. Keep an eye out throughout this video for an exclusive discount code and get 10% off store-wide for all Full Drive Supercenter YouTube subscribers. And as always, enjoy this adventure because this is an epic trip. Let's take you back a few days. Well, blokes, what a top day to be out on the tracks. And today, sort of, Mark's a bit of a milestone, I suppose. 300 issues and not out. Mate, I, it's, it almost gets a little bit teary. 300, that's a hell of a number, mate. Certainly is, mate. And to kick it off in a place like um, the back of Warhope, where some of the hardest tracks lie, bring it on, I say. Jocko, you'd be ready, wouldn't you? Yeah, mate, I've done a little bit around here, and I'm pretty stoked to uh, be out here again for the lucky 300, so it should be good. Pretty tough from memory. We've only been out of here, what, once or twice, Shona? Yeah, mate, I, I'm, like last time was quite a quite a while ago too, so. Yeah, yeah I, I'm super keen, mate. Had a little bit of rain too, so I think it's gonna make a few of these tracks pretty wild. Yeah, they hardly need any help in making them harder, mate, but um, I say let's uh, nose up to the biggest hill we can find and see what happens. Lead on, fearless captain. Let's get into it. First things first though, it's time to air down and get ready for our first track of the day, which has a curious little name. So Jocko, are you sure this is right, mate? I'm just about to go down, it looks like, it's like a bridge. Yeah, mate, so this leads to uh, a track called Little Mousetrap, but it's a little bit, something a little bit different. You get to drive under the highway, it's a bit of fun. Just to get to the bridge might be a bit difficult. Wonder if you'll fit. Was designed for an 80 series. I think that's what they were thinking when they built it. Well, that tunnel, that's the easy part out of the way. Now for the serious stuff. I'm just gonna go slowly because I'm a bit worried about this big rock I'm gonna hit. Go back a bit and give it some curry from there. This clay soil out here only needs the smallest amount of moisture and you've got virtually no traction. Add to that, Sean has almost vertical here, no hope at all. Front locker would help a lot. I don't reckon you'll get up. I think I might go the other way. Good idea, mate. We haven't even started these tracks yet. That's difficult, this red clay gets real slippery. Jocko might just stand a slightly better chance of getting up here. See how he goes. Woo, what am I hitting? Your front bar. Sorry, mate. Ooh, that's a slippery boy. This is a slippery boy. I don't reckon I'll get up this. No, I hope. Jock's opted to go around as well, which means I'm going to follow suit. Slippery boy. So 
So, Jocko, now we've done the tough bit of the track, mate. What's uh, next? Oh, I had to tell you this, but that's not the tough bit, mate. In fact, in about 100 metres, you'll see the tough bit. It's only a short little pinch, but uh, it's definitely a committing drive. What's it called, mate? Have I heard of it? It's called Little Mousetrap. There's Big Mousetrap and Little Mousetrap. Big Mousetrap is apparently, you know, for the big boy comp truck spec sort of vehicles, and Little Mousetrap's for us. This is not Rat Trap. If it was Rat Trap, I'd be concerned. Yeah, well, you just wait and see, mate. I think uh, we're in for a bit of fun this morning. What's the line of choice? It doesn't, it doesn't look that bad. For... No, this is easy, man. Apparently, according to the locals, the, the, the real line, I guess you could call it, has been your left tyre up here. And you've got to have your tyres at 50 PSI, and you're not yeah. allowed to use low range. Yep, no, and go up cool. backwards, unlock them yeah. until drive. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I reckon I'll give that a go, but I might get you to spot me because I don't exactly want to get it wrong. Yeah, so what are you, what are you thinking, just crawling up that? Well, I'm, th I'm thinking of getting my left tyre to come up this bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep. My, I want my right side to stay there. I reckon yours will just eat that. Hopefully, I'll, we'll know if I get it wrong. I reckon... I'm gonna reverse into here <laughs> and drive backwards up there. <laughs> That's probably, my plan for today. Probably your best option, mate. <laughs> I'm gonna go straight up this. There's like a little path there and a path there. Yeah. And then I'll just scoot up there. All right, I'm gonna give it a go, so. All right. Watch. Stand back. Watch and have a look. I'll make this look real hard. <laughs> look at those tyres, just perfect. Very slippery. Super slippery, I didn't expect that. Maybe it's time for a slightly different line here. On that line? Yeah, that's pretty good, the front tires are up. Did not see this coming. Let's give it one more go. I've got nothing. So Sean has had a gallant attempt at this and he's got actually quite a fair way up, but zero traction. Now the problem he might have as he keeps going is that front's gonna slip over and down the hill. I'd hate to see him put that thing on his side here that it sucks. So we're gonna give him a winch from here. And I think that winch is gonna be quite hard either. I mean, you gotta come up two rock steps there. So, we'll give it a go. You might be able to drive that now. Woo! No, she's slippery. Might have to change that winch. Listen, I'm sorry. The recent rains in the area have turned the dust and dirt on these rocks into pure clay. That means absolutely no traction. It's hard enough winching up here, let alone driving. Jock's got a plan to hang far left and take what is considered to be the more traditional line on Mousetrap. So, let's see how he goes. Yeah, mate, that's, that's a good line. Yeah, that's right up the top. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You just want to get your fronts over. I might just go back where you were and I might put a rock just in there. It really will help. So we'll put a couple of rocks underneath, hopefully. So he's, he's trying to climb everything at once. Yep. I don't know how he'll go, but... Well, let's give this a go. No, Jock, he's not going to give up. Easy. He's not going to give up. Nope. If these rocks were just slightly drier, if he had just a little more traction, I reckon Jock could do this. Yeah, 
However, in this set of circumstances, he's going nowhere, so a different line is in order. with more mods than a bloody boy can eat buffet. <laughs> and here he is, struggling. Maybe, just maybe, if we put a rock in the right position, just maybe. Where? Uh, let's good wait drive, for me. Good drive, good drive. Winch. You've done well, mate. The Dominator X winch has been asked for, and I think that is a really good call. Good drive, though, Jocko. I tell you what, mate, trying conditions, you got further than most. Okay, I'm up. That's real good, mate. Good drive, good drive. <laughs> it's all about giving it a go, and I'm dead keen. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. Slowly. We might change direction on the winch a few times, that's cool, Graham. We'll go straight up there. Up there somewhere. Get you up over that rock. Change direction, get you around the tree. Might be three different winches. Too easy. This first winch we're doing is really short. It's only there just to get me over this first rock. On this second winch, well, we even needed to do a little bit of track building just to help out here. But thankfully, all we needed to do to get the D-Max up was two winches. Well played. All right, boys, we've got a like a huge rut. It's almost like someone's taking an excavator down in the middle of the track here. What's your plan, mate? You going straddle it or are you going? Go up the guts. Yeah, it's going to join the start. Put one wheel into it and then, because it looks quite wide. Yeah, it's a little bit off-cambered, but there seems to be plenty of room. Yeah, you're on quite an angle there, but it looks pretty safe. Massive rut down here, though. Oh, you weren't kidding about that rut, mate. Oh, it's tight. That's very tight. Great job. Yeah, that felt a little bit wild, but I think it's all good. Well, have fun with that one, Graham. It's nice and tight. It might be tight, but the D-Max has got such a low centre of gravity that these steep angles like this really don't bother me at all. That noise you can hear is my side steps working as they should be, which is good. I'll try and drop into here and see how that goes. Okay, okay, that works quite well. Kind of flexy boy through there. But we're through. We've done it. Well, we made it unscathed. So from here, we're going to continue on and explore around the Kawara Dam area. Well, boys, you're going to love this one. A little bit of mud. A dirty little bog hole at the end, too. Go easy in there, power out. Oh, look at that. Do you want to come back? We could winch you off the back and give it a red hot go. Ah, uh, no, I'll just winch forward, mate. It's, uh, I'll stuff this one up. Yep. We're bringing out the Dominator X winch. Now, you can see why this gear is just so critical to four-wheel driving on tracks like these. Sticky. 
Oh, Jock's going to give it some herbs. Oh, look out. Jock's not holding back on this one. Look at that mud. Oh. <laughs> Do you reckon I should give it a red hot go or should I preserve radiator? I reckon I like to go in slow and then just pair out. If I don't make it, just jump on the winch. That's what I'm going to do, I think. I don't want to, I don't want to clog up your radiator. That's smart driving. So the last thing I want to do is put more stress on the engine than I need to. So I'm going to crawl in and just see how we go. Maybe I'll make it out, maybe I won't. But... Get him to winch from there. The reason, of course, I've tackled that bog hole like I have is because I don't want to clog up my radiator with some thick, sticky mud. It's a pretty common occurrence. Radiators get clogged up, engines overheat, and I don't want that. So I've gone insensibly, I'll winch out the other end. And wouldn't you know it, after that thick, wet, muddy goop, now comes a dry creek bed. Straight down and up. That's a pretty good description. Oh, this is really off camber too. Don't feel good about this. That looks like a bit of a wild angle there, mate. Yeah, not great. If this was wet and muddy, I tell you what, it'd be absolutely impossible to get up it or down it. There we go with that. In the wet, that'd be almost impossible. Oh, this is off camera. Oh, that's a steep little exit. Sketchy little section here. This is where everything off the front seat fly, slides down to the bottom. Woo! Got a copy up the front there, Shauna? Yeah, mate, gotcha. Mate, you reckon we got time for another track or you want to try and make, uh, make tracks to camp? I was just thinking, mate, um, we've had a bit of fun today. I wouldn't mind getting down to camp and uh, setting up, maybe. Dragging a few car ones, you know what I'm saying? You got a camp in mind? I was thinking maybe you jump on that uh, U Camp app and see what you come up with. Can do, mate, can do. All right, well, you lead on. And uh, Jocko. You've got a beard, right? I thought you had him. Don't play coy with me, son. Boys, all you need to know is I certainly don't have him. Don't check my fridge. Jocko, Sean's got the beard. Engage, get the beers. Utilising the UCamp website, we found an absolutely cracking spot at Long Flat. Now, it's behind a pub, it's got a river running alongside it, beautiful flat grassy sites. What more could you possibly want? Time to set up camp and crack a coldie. We're camped down beside a beautiful little river and a little town called Long Flat, just out west of Warhope, west of Port Macquarie, and um, not too far from the tracks is what I like about it. Now, there are two things you can be assured when you come to a small country town normally. Now, number one, they're gonna have a pub. Now, Long Flat's got a little pub. Number two, they're usually gonna have a dodgy Chinese takeaway. Now, Long Flat doesn't have that, but tonight, it's gonna have that because I'm cooking up a little bit of Chinese. Now, first things first, I'm gonna crack this one into gear, get a little bit of heat on the baduri. There we go, that's going nice and strong. And this, this makes anyone a champion chef. Get a little bit of garlic. We're gonna chuck in about, oh, about that much garlic. And a little bit of ginger. That's about the same. About the same ginger, same garlic. Well, there we go. Starting to get nice and hot, and the smell's starting to come through. So probably give that about, there, about a minute. You can smell that. That's oh, just a bit of garlic. garlic. Yeah. A bit of garlic and a little bit of ginger. You can do you that. Me, mate? Have you ever had dodgy Chinese in a country town? Yeah, so many times. <laughs> well, you're gonna have it again tonight, mate. All right. Mate, do you want to jump yep, into the old King's oh, Fridge here? I'll need some meat. So I think I've got some mints in there. All right. Give me, a, give me yeah, one of those. Yeah, give me one of those. those yeah. There we go. Yeah, you just want to yeah. chuck the beef mints carrots? straight in. Yeah, get carrots and broccolini. There should be um, is it capsicum in there. Ooh. It's basically like a little bit of a stir fry. So you, you keep adding, I'll stir, mate. Yeah, you We're do that. We're adding these too, I suppose. What's the chilies? Yeah, bring those, bring those out, mate. Good call. 
So this is a little bit of beef mince now. What you want to do before you start adding sauces is uh, brown. brown that mince, yeah. Yes, chef. Beautiful, beautiful. So I'm just going to start cutting everything because you want that to go nice and brown. Have a go at this, chef. Oh, well, that's starting to get brown. Thank that's you. starting to get brown. Really well done. Thank you. All right. I'm nearly ready to start with the sauces. So we want to chuck a couple of chilies in. Thanks, Doggo. These ones are really, really hot. I knew that. Uh, Put two of those in. They're, Dude, they're we need to, we're, we're, we're really brown here. Okay, well, let's get some chilies in there straight up. Okay, cool, cool. That'll do, bro. That's quite a bit of chilli, mate. Nah, it's not. Not in this, not in this side. Ask Doggo how hot they are. There's actually a couple of pieces of chilli in here that have got like all the seeds attached. Yeah, they get that. So, so get whoever that, gets that. You get that the old <laughs> molten <laughs> mouthful, yeah. mate. Molten like, mouthful. All right. So now that, that's brown, that's beautiful. Really good, man. All right, so first things first. Yes. This one here is the old Chinese wine. You can't yes. drink this stuff, but you can chuck it in the old... Uh... How much, chef? Um, so for this, I've got I've got about a kilo of mince, so about a cup. A, but you want to put about a cup of that in. Here's a little bit of soy sauce. I'm going to whack a bit of that in. Go nuts, man. So that's about two tablespoons of soy. And this is the key ingredient. This one will make it or break it. It's the old uh, char su sauce. All right, we're going to put about two thirds of one of these in here. That's nearly all of it, actually. So let's put the lid back on him. I've got a bit of salt too, from a, from a distance. Wait, off my elbow. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Now we know it's good. You want to get a little bit of brown sugar now. This, How come it tastes so good? This is what you, this is what you do with a lot of Chinese food. You'll find you, you have to put a little bit of sugar in. The sweetness cancels out the uh, sourness, the bitterness. One of the two. Well, all the stuff on your hands before. Did you wash them? Or no, no, he doesn't bother that, mate. Did. First things first. Carrots. Yeah, Black carrot straight in. Bang. Do you want me to pick this end up? No, no, no. We've got carrots first, so they take a little bit longer to ah. cook. But you, know, you know you're doing Chinese right when you've got soy, you've got uh, ginger, you've got garlic, you've got a bit of this one here, the old um, char su. Char su. Yeah. I, um, that chilli ruined my... Okay. Sm I can't smell it. Oh, jog. You'll like it no matter what. Well, you guys look like you're handling that. I'm going to go sit by the fire with a cold beer. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to get some hot water on because we've got some uh, vermicelli noodles. All right, mate. What's next? All right. I've got the boil on the water. Yes! I like it when you put the boil on water. <laughs> I want to chuck it in a bit of the old capsicum now. Yeah, next, next, so basically, next. Basically just getting all this gear in, so I've got the broccolini Damn, in there. Damn, boy, I've got the rough end of the stick here with the stirring stick. Oh, look at the colours, will you? I know, I know, it's starting to come together. Damn, to boy! Together. Tuck it all in. Even that's... the stuff on the dusty table, put that all in. Don't worry about that, that's good. Well, how's that looking, mate? How's that looking? I'll tell you what. You keep eating it, so I must be all right. Well, I'm just eating the Smell. broccolini. Oh, here we go, we're on the boil, we're on the boil. Oh, talk we're on, about we're on the boil. timing, brother. Mm. All right, you hungry? Yes. You, what am I saying? You're always hungry. <laughs> right, this is going to happen real quick. So I want to get the vermicelli noodles out. We're going to get a little bit of... Uh, Pour it over them. And you just want to basically leave that now for five minutes. So that's just enough time to get some bowls out. Yep. And we're good to go. You grab some tongs. Grab some tongs. Get some okay. Get some noodles. Whack those in the bowl. There you go. Look at that. That's looks oh, that good. does look good, doesn't it? It does right. look good. Real easy recipe. You want to stir that around. Give it a go. So. Oh, I don't know how many ingredients, maybe about 10. One pot wonder. Here's a one pot wonder. Got some vermicelli noodles, we've got those on the boil. We've got a bit of beef mince, you can use pork. Some char su, that's a type of uh, Asian sauce. We've got the old Chinese wine and the soy sauce, garlic, ginger, salt, pepper. And heaps of chilli. And how are we going with this, boys? Mate. How are we going? That's a big question. You've done, Super good, you've done bro. You've yourself yet again, mate. Oh, I'll tell there you what. Is. That's dodgy Chinese without the dodgy part. Grab a cold one, grab yourself some uh, some dodgy Chinese, and let's get around the fire, mate. Because I reckon. Oh, that's so good. How's your toilet roll supply? Have you got heaps? I've got heaps, yeah. Right. I think I'm out. Get more Falesset Four Wheel Drive Super Center with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand-up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam. But warning, it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Full Drive Supercenter, you get more for less. We woke up this morning to some wet and misty conditions, however, it was only short-lived and very localised. So by the time we got out to the tracks, everything was dry and we were good to go. 
Hey, Jocko, you got a copy, mate? Yeah, mate, I got you. All right, I've got to say, mate, I've never been down this dirt road before. This is a place called, what, Jolly Nose or something? It is, mate, it is. There is some steep, insane tracks out here, but uh, it's been a long time since I've uh, actually been out here, so we'll have to follow our nose a bit, our, our Jolly Nose, so to speak. See what I did there? Oh, God, mate. I um, hope, hope the tracks are better than that. I reckon they will be. If um, Port Macquarie has anything, mate, it's tough tracks, and I reckon this place will be no exception. Absolutely, absolutely. And the best part is, uh, when you get to the top, uh, there's a tower and there's a lookout back down to the ocean, which would be really nice. Sounds like a plan. Mate and Graham, you were saying something about a swim, maybe, a bit later. Well, it's currently 32 at like 8 in the morning, mate, I reckon. <laughs> we could have a swim. Today would be the day for it. One of those, uh, one of those crystal clear mountain streams, or if we have to, mate, if we absolutely have to, I'll even accept a beach swim. Mate, that'll do. Sign me up. Let's get into it, eh? Those are the kind of street signs we live for. So, we didn't need any prompting. Lock the hubs, let's get into it. Looks like uh, this is the turn off, Jocko. Just go straight up the mountain, eh? I don't actually know what this track is called, but I'm pretty sure it leads up to the Jolly Nose Lookout and one of the multiple entrances you can take to get up there, but we're not scouting it out. It looks like it hasn't been driven in a long time, so it should be interesting. I can't see very well, it's dusty. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to have our work cut out, boys. Oh wow, that's gotten worse since last time I was here. This looks downright insane, mate. Crikey. This is okay. a hill. Yeah, this is a big boy hill. This I'm is guessing the first bit. This, this is, is the first bit. I'm guessing it keeps going. After that, it gets to some deep old ruts. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. What you were saying, go up near that tree. I am. That's and the I reason go. is, if you get up here and your rear right tyre gets stuck in there, you're going to know about it. You're going to know about it. Yeah, but uh, if you get up there, you can bring your left tyre up along here and get your right tyre in that rut. And yes, it's going to feel wild, but, but you're not, not going to go anywhere. Go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll lift a wheel for the oh, boys. Oh, saying put your passenger on this. Yeah. Up there. And just Oh, okay, I thought you were going right up near the tree. I thought, mm. oh, that's heavy. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, all right, right. And if you can get your right tyre in that rut, at least it's going to guide you around. And I, I can almost guarantee you'll lift a wheel, but... Can't go anywhere. Yeah. Okay, all right. I mean, I could be wrong. You could go you up here. Could I'd, you'll see what I do anyway, yeah. mate. And uh, then you can make a more informed decision. Yeah, well, well you've got to get up this bit first anyway, so... Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I'll go around the tree here and... I need to have a nervous wee. So. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> all right. All right, let's get into it. Hold my walking stick. <laughs> Get into it's going to be a challenge. Yep, now good start, Sean. Can you just spat out my rock packing? Yeah, the rock packing is not on today. No, I might get some max tracks and just really trying to get some grip on that. This is one of those situations where max tracks are probably not something you'd first think of, but if we can use them as a ramp right, to get him up over that tree route, well, we're home and hose. Oh, nice. Got the first bit done. Max Tick. Went flying backwards, but that's all right. That's what we wanted. That worked perfect. We got the front wheels up exactly as we wanted to do. Now, we've got to do a bit of work here to rock pack and get those max tracks back under and try and get those rear wheels back up and over the top of that tree root. I didn't feel myself gripping. You're, you're on your shaft. I can go back. You spat everything out and it sort of sunk down. You can probably back back down. Yeah, take the other line. Yeah, the smartest option here was to back down before we do damage and take that secondary line around the tree. Still going to be tricky. Still not going to be real easy. It's quite a tight little turn there. Just watch that big rock and punny on your right. Yeah, got that one. Yeah, if you're sweet on this side. Right hand down. Beautiful. Look at the rear stick. Was easy? Yeah, that was, I think that was just the right line. 
Mate, if this had a more solid base up the top, yep. with his front lockers, I'd say you'd have half a chance. But because I saw what you did when you got up here. Yeah. It's just. We do have the max track ramp going. We do. He wants me to look out for his tail shaft. Yep. If I give him the signal, he's going to give it a little bit. Yep. If I give him the other signal saying, no, no, no. He's probably still going to give it a little bit. He probably will, but he might have to go the other way. Yeah, we'll see how he goes. He's got a good chance though. Mm -hmm. Right on. He's in super crawl mode. It's the big Tonka truck. Okay, here we go. You're on it. You spat it out. Nah. I think you have to do that in a bit, bit more with one smooth motion up that. Yeah, okay. We were keen to give him a second chance, repack, reload those max tracks, see how we go, but we're very conscious of that tail shaft. Yep, 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 yep. Oh. 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 If I move back, go back we pack it, it. we might hit it. Sean is going to have a proper go at packing this little obstacle because we believe if we get this right, Jocko's got a good shot at getting over the top of this tree stump. That was close. Yep. You were up. up. You were up. Oh. And then you bounced and bounced backwards instead yeah. of forwards. I can we give another go at that? Yeah, right. Just one more go. One more. That that front max tracks help. It does. Yeah. Phew. That'll do it. And there you go. One more, no more. Our old catch cry. Worked a treat. Committing line goes to show that thing can do any line at once. It was pointless to even try the first way. I was only going to do damage, so I opted for the right hand line. Low range, first gear, crawly crawly boy. Turn up around this rock here with a bit of luck. No, no. Go back. Left hand down. Yep. Is that that big rock? Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I see him. Hard right. Give it a bit of mayo. Yeah. That's the ticket. It might have been dry, but you get these gravelly surfaces like this, and well, it may as well be mud. There's that little traction. Go back just a touch. Try from there. Yep. Come to me. Nah, winch it. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking winch, mate. Nah, I wasn't going to get up here. It was time to pull out the Dominator X, and that is why you buy a winch. There we go. Three, two, one, commencing. Yep. Left, left, left. Go, 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 go. Look, out back challenge. Yeah. And so it was back out with the Dominator X for one last small winch. Good job, mate, good drive. Well, made it up there, but we weren't done just yet. I thought we'd kind of broken the backbone of this hill, but I would suggest that we are maybe a third of the way up, and that looks just as hard as what we've done. Could be in here for a long haul. Okay. Oh, try going right. Yeah. Do you get your left, left eye up here? 
Oh, come on now. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to pop it. Hold up there. Eh? See if you can move that big rock. There was one huge rock in the way here that we needed to move if Shauna was gonna give this a proper go. Here's your back, I mean your legs. Up that way, Sean Owen. I ain't getting any easier by the look of it. <laughs> we popped out. I might get out of the way. Shono had a couple of goes of this line, and with each attempt, he got just that little bit further. We had hope. But in the end, you've just got to have one more, no more. If I go a little bit right, right hand down, I'm on the way back. Yeah, try that. Can I winch over it? Yep. Okay, let's do that. Yep, clear. Well, that was quite the epic. Let's see how Jocko goes. He's sitting right on his diff, and there's not much wiggle room for that tail shaft either. We've got to rethink this. On the shaft. Can we just winch forward? Yeah, that is a smart move, Jocko. Tail shafts, they don't grow on trees. They're bloody expensive, mate. Now, having seen all of the obstacles on this track and the way in which the bigger trucks have struggled, I decided to take a completely different line altogether. Mate, the Seth Port and Quarry traction strikes again, eh? Oh, absolutely, mate. Look, I, I actually told the camera crew not even to bother filming this side because it was going to be that easy. There's no rock steps. There's just absolutely no traction. And once you stop on this sort of terrain, forget about it. Yeah. We've been looking at about a 100 metre winch to get up this hill, and there's nothing I can do. I went to come back. I had to recover myself up the top as well. So I'm not going to come back any further because I'll just be winching the whole way. So then they're just going to winch through this. It's about this much worth of bulldust. Now it's more bulldust than you put out, which yeah. says something, so... Yeah, it's a lot then, yeah. I reckon we winch him up here and um, just all hands on deck and just winch after winch. Sounds good, mate. Let's get into it. Go. And that's exactly what we had to do. Winch after winch, and we even had to use a pulley block at times. And after all that, we were done for the day. What do you reckon, boys? I reckon, uh, far out. I remember that track for a while. You and me both, mate. You and me both. That was hectic. I hope this view's worth it. Mate, just judging from look at I can see through the trees at the moment, we can see all the way down to Crescent Head by the looks of it and all the beach there. Outstanding. That is something special. Is that Crescent Head I can see down there, is it? That's Crescent Head down the right, that big um, headland. Um, yeah, yeah, good. I gotta say, I didn't imagine we'd get this sort of view. Just only a minute ago, we're stuck in the dust and, and the dirt. Well, boys, that is what you call a view. Yeah, love it, mate. That Absolutely makes sensational. 
everything worthwhile in my opinion and I've never seen this part of the coast from up this high. No, neither have I mate. What do you reckon? We head to camp. Get back up here. Yeah, on a, on a beautiful little free camp actually. Got a free camp? Not far from me. Alright, well, lead the way. I'll lead on. I'll tell you what, I won't be free though. The beers mate. It's your shout. You go first. Dude, I love this part of the world. There's cows in the paddocks just down there on the left. Rainforesty country out here. Jeez, I love this part of the world. Pretty easy to get used to it out here. It's all washes and green. Right on the divided range means all the hard tracks and uh, some great camping too. Jocko, you up? Absolutely, mate. Hard tracks and pristine camping and... Pretty good views on the way in too. I'm in, mate. I like that about you, Jocko. You like to wheel the hardest tracks you can possibly find, but you're not averse to finding a pretty campsite either. Life is about balance, my friend. Ah, yes, Grasshopper. Well, how about we get in and bounce a couple of beers? Oh, well, I can't see around all the time. Oh, we can And with that, we headed to a great little spot we knew about at Swan's Crossing. It's these kind of campsites and these kind of tracks that keep us coming back for more. And I say cheers to that. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. One of the greatest things about waking up in the Aussie bush is the sounds of the birds and the animals stirring at first light. We can't hang around though, we have got tracks to conquer, so it's up early for us and into it. I'm going to say, it's a great little camp. Mate, it's a good fallback camp, isn't it? It's really a free camp, you can't argue about the price. And, um... I always sleep good on the nuts way. Better than a hotel. What's the plan today, Jocko? We'll hit some tracks, no doubt, and um, <laughs> it's gonna be tough one soon. Yeah, mate, if uh, the previous tracks we've been doing are anything to go by, I think uh, we've got a few exciting uh, hill climbs in store for us today. But I think we're just gonna head to a few different areas and follow our nodes. What do you reckon? Uh, sounds like a plan, mate. Ooh, ah. I love it. Let's get into it, boys. been out this way before mate, it's, I don't know, sort of looks familiar to me. Yeah we certainly have mate, I think the track I want to steer is up towards that um, last time I drove it I was in the 79 and I got one of the biggest wheel lifts of my life. Ah, yeah, yeah nearly rolled it, if memory serves correct. Oh I still had a bit to go but um, it certainly put the wind up me. There's a couple of lines on that from memory. There's an easy line and uh, um, roll your 79 series line, so um, <laughs> I'm in an 80 today so I reckon give it a crack. Like a lot of the tracks out this way, the minute you turn off the main drag, you are directly into it. And this one, no different. This will be his second go up this hill, first time was in the 79. And he nearly, nearly binned it, so we'll see. I think he's gonna have no problems up, straight up here. If it's that deceptive slipperiness. That's like the thing, man. Take the top off that, it's a bit of clay stuff underneath there, so we'll see. We'll see how he goes, send him up. Tried this before and had no luck, but this time around. It's coming up nice and slow. It's a little bit scrabbly, less traction than we thought, but... Yeah, straight up. Yeah, he's made it look easy, old sooty. Big difference to the 79. Absolutely no threat of landing on your roof this time. <laughs> and that's a relief, I've got to say. Jock's going to take a stranger line here. Yee-hoo! 
What hill? A beast indeed, Jocko. It's a tribute to you, mate. You have built one heck of a truck. All right, my turn. Now, there's an alternative line out to the right-hand side. It's a bit tighter, but I reckon I got a good shot at this. With that safely done, we decided to head off for more tracks around the Bago area. Where look, even small hills out that way can be somewhat deceptive. But as usual, the Newlon camera car gets first taste. Have a go at this terrain, boys. Nice little pinch. That's a exit, mate. Uh, you wouldn't want to mess that up. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't, actually. That's steak. Nicely driven. <laughs> actually a bit scary. I won't lie to you. Uh, might have that little uh, look of nervousness on my face, that's for sure. Ooh. That's not finished, mate. Yep, that is definitely steep. Can confirm, you're gonna have fun with that, Graham. I don't like it when you say that, Jock. Famous last words. Oh well, here we go. No, 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 no. Let's get your thing reversed down, I'll tell you what. I'll give it another go. We'd been told about a popular little swimming hole not far from here, and after that little climb, <laughs> we all needed cooling off. Well, if this isn't the break we needed. This is one of the best oh. swimming holes I think I've ever, ever seen. Yeah. Yep. First wash I've had in a week, dude. <laughs> 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 a bit of an oil yeah. slick when you yeah. jump in, that's for sure. We won't say exactly where this is, folks. I think it's uh, up to you guys to find this little uh, treasure trove. Just at the back of the wall, hope, though. Roughly speaking. You can't go too wrong. No, you can't go too wrong. I reckon another half an hour and then back on the track. Perfect. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. All right, road swim. Try go there. I'm going to go another jump off. Yeah, thing. all right. Hey. No, I'm not, Jackson. That's way scary, eh? Let's do it. Now, we had old scores to settle out the back of Bogo. You see, there's a track out here that we'd attempted a couple of years ago and failed miserably on. So we were heading back to settle the score. Well, we've just taken that little left onto, um, I don't even know what this track's called really, but last time we were up here, Graham, I think you'll remember it quite well when you see it. It's um, the best bit of a day winching up here. I do remember it, mate, I do. I've put a pin in from last time that I've loaded and kept. Uh, so we're heading in exactly the right direction, mate, on the old VMS anyway. Was it as dry as this when you did it last time, or was it a bit wet? Hard to tell, mate. Hard to tell. I think we had... I don't know. I don't know, mate. Well, today it's bone dry, but there's a lot of leaf litter on top, and my experience out here says that as soon as you get rid of that leaf litter, conditions can change drastically. So we'll see how we go. Sean's up first. He ain't gonna hold back on this one, I reckon. Sooty is going to give it a run for its money. So close! You're really wet. 
ledge, bro. Yeah, yeah on that rear diff, yeah, it's just like one convenient rock. You can see though, even in these dry conditions, traction is wanting. The only real option here is to jump on the Dominator X2. Well, unwedge him. We only need to get about a car length and we're good to go. Over to your right a bit, mate. Ah, uh, you can come over a bit, up this rock. Up the right? Yeah. The help from a spotter on tracks like this is absolutely That's crucial. It. That's it. Let's winch you over this, dude. What an absolute doozy of a track. And thank yeah. goodness, the winches. Without these, we'd be nowhere. Righto, let's see how Jocko fares. He built that truck for tracks like this. I reckon he's got a fair chance. Adjustment to his line. I reckon Jocko's got this. Yeah. That's funny, mate. That's good Outstanding. Right, oh, it's my turn. Could be a number of different factors coming into this. And this could be interesting. Hold on to your hats. Unreal drive, mate. He's got to a great spot. Won't lie, pretty impressed with how far I got up that hill, considering a couple of bigger trucks struggled the whole way up. So, I'll take the winch any day from here. Like a lot of the tracks out here, though, when you think you're done, <laughs> think again. We still had quite a ways to go to get to the top. Uh, I really don't think people have driven this for a while. It's so tight. Wrong, Good news is, boys, I'm clearing most of the forest for you. So I got the big bulldozer up the front. Ah, oh, it's horrible noises, mate. Horrible noises. Then finally, thankfully, we were in the clear. Well, boys, I think um, after that gallant effort, I reckon we treat ourselves to a, one of the views around here. What do you reckon? Well, if we get any higher, mate, I'm going to get a nosebleed, so there's got to be a view somewhere. Yeah, it certainly does. I love the view up here, mate. It's probably one of the best on the East Coast, actually, in terms of doing a hard track and getting to a great view. This would be probably the big. Makes hard tracks that much more rewarding when there's something like that at the end. So, yeah, bring it on. I think I've, I've been to this view before, haven't I, Sean? Yeah, we've been here a couple of times, mate. The old Bago Hills. You know what you call this place in winter, mate? <laughs> Winnebago. No, no laughs. Hey, Job, do you want to go to the pub after this for a <laughs> bit, mate? Graham, you're not allowed to be on any standpoint because... Your bad jokes are even worse. All right, I'll go to the pub by myself then. Well, you can't sit around here all day. And then you get to views like this. How good is it? Look at this, look at this. Watch the big tree stuff, you'll get excited if you go too hard. Said it before, I'm gonna say it again. This 
is what owning a four-wheel drive is all about. Oh, hey, boys. How boys. Yeah, are you, mate? Tell you what, that last step there is a doozy. Bikes, yeah, yeah, I'll wait. You that want is, <laughs> that is next level down there. Yeah. Oh. What a view. To come and drive some of the toughest tracks on the mid north coast, finish up here. Yeah. And you see the ocean over there, there's feel, a storm over there. Storm coming in. Top of the world. You literally are, no? Tell you what, if you've not been up to the mid north coast of New South Wales, Warhope, Port Macquarie, those kind of areas, get yourself up here, you owe it to yourself. This is the kind of scenery you're going to have. Set the vehicle up right as Oh well. yeah, well of yep. course, do that. Yeah. Do yeah. that. Right. Get and yourself an 80 series and... Um, <laughs> you might drive some of these tracks. You might. Well I reckon mate, this marks a big milestone. Not the Huge, fact that mate. we've just driven some of the hardest tracks oh. in New South Wales, but I reckon a big milestone because we're up to issue 300. For now folks, we are going to head to the Bago Pub. Yep. Are Sounds we? Good. Yeah, Excellent. it's your shout by the way. You own it. This mate. is my shout. I think it's my shout. Folks, you might see us up here next time. You definitely will not see him up here. No way. He does not nice. like it at all. Jocko, issue 300, mate. You've got it. Go for it. Four drive action. You. <laughs> Get off here. <laughs> Oops, that's not my car. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. Our entire range of Titan Storage Drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. All models of Titan Double Drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each draw top also has these heavy duty spring loaded tie down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double draw setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros and SUVs, with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single draw on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide and 150 millimeters high. The 1300mm single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40mm of depth, making them 190mm deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880mm long, 470mm wide and 180mm of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. 
Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test, so they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius, and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure Kings Premium Camp Oven Stove. Your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind. One less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus your firewood lasts longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. 
There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the premium camp oven stove as required. Inside you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tons. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two ton ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the Four Wheel Drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.